Hundreds of people protesting against Israel's military offensive in Gaza have clashed with riot police in the Jordanian capital, Amman. Security forces struggled to contain the crowd trying to break through a cordon outside the Israeli embassy. The UN Security Council is set to vote on a resolution demanding an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza during the Muslim, uh, the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. The vote comes after Russia and China vetoed a U.S.-sponsored ceasefire resolution on Friday. U.N. Chief Antonio Guterres says people will starve to death if more aid is not allowed to enter Gaza. Well, Germany's top diplomat has returned to the Middle East in hopes of bringing about a ceasefire in Gaza. Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock arrived in Cairo, where she's expected to hold talks with her Egyptian counterpart. She'll fly on to Israel in what will be her sixth visit to the country since the Hamas-led terror attacks on October 7th. She's also expected to visit the Israeli-occupied West Bank and meet Palestinian Authority leader Mahmoud Abbas. Well, joining me now in the studio is DW's Middle East analyst, Shani Rosanis. Shani, Germany's foreign minister is visiting the region at a time when efforts to secure a ceasefire in Gaza are intensifying. Uh, Annalena Baerbach is currently in Cairo. What can we expect? Well, the deal of the hostage deal that we're talking about, a ceasefire hostage deal, that's very much the center of attention right now. The whole region is expecting, if this deal will go through, to have some sort of, 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 of a break for a couple of weeks, probably 40 days, that will maybe bring a new momentum, because we've seen the dire situation in Gaza, the humanitarian crisis, the famine. We also know that militarily, Israel is not making much progress and, and need might be regrouping and might uh, use that time to come up with a better plan for what's going to happen in Gaza. And this is probably part of uh, the center of the talks for Annalena Borebork and Egypt. Also, we know that Egypt and uh, Germany have very strong defense ties. So that's also part of that, of course, um, the needs for uh, more defense for uh, the Egyptians have very much uh, escalated following what we've been seeing in Gaza, Egypt being, you know, a, a major uh, partner for the uh, uh, Palestinians as the one having a border with Gaza other than Israel. Now, Baerbach will travel to Israel later today. Uh, she and many others have voiced concern about Israel's plans to launch an offensive on the Rafah, uh, the city of Rafah in southern Israel, where more than a million Palestinians are sheltering right now. Uh, is Prime Minister Netanyahu, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is he showing any willingness to reconsider his plans to launch that assault on Rafah? No, not officially at least. Uh, he seems very adamant and still going through a very massive ground invasion military operation into Rafah, that city that is on the border between Egypt and Gaza, which was also affects very much Egypt. There's a great concern for the Egyptians. What happens in case that the over one million uh, Palestinians that had to flee there will try to find refuge? Are they going to cross the border? What that might mean? What that, that could also have uh, risks for the Egyptians. That's one part of that. But there's also the issue of Rafah itself. Uh, the, the Israelis seem to be pushing forward uh, for more uh, uh, military operations there. They claim there are four battalions of, the, of Hamas, of the terror organization, that are still there. Uh, the world, uh, the Americans also, we've seen uh, the, uh, the Chancellor uh, Schultz there last week. We see Baerbock this week are saying, Maybe there are other means to achieve your goals of eradicating Hamas, of, of, of building something new for the Palestinians without this operation that might bring many more dead people into Gaza. We've already seen 32,000 Palestinian dead. Uh, how are you going to manage uh, in Rafah now with over a million people that are there? Big diplomatic efforts underway. Uh, as you say, Germany's uh, chancellor was in Israel just last week. Now we've got uh, the foreign minister heading there from, from Germany as well. How is this increased pressure from Germany on Israel being seen in Israel? We're seeing great concern. Israel's isolation feels, you know, Going, growing bigger and bigger. Um, and G Germany and the Americans are the top allies of Israel. They're also the top uh, aid provider, providers to Israel. And that means that there's also leverage. There's possibility for both the Americans and Germany to decide that they condition supply of weapons or maybe uh, put any sanctions in Israel and limitations on the uses of uh, weapons being provided by these two allies. If that happens, Israel's ability to complete its operation the way it plans it right now in Gaza is going to be very limited. Um, and this is a great concern in Israel, definitely. Okay, Shani, we'll leave it there. DR Middle East analyst Shani Rosanis, thank you very much. Welcome, Terry.
Journalist Karim El Gahori joins us from Cairo. Uh, tell us more about Baerbock's Box meetings in Egypt. Well, what we hear from the Egyptian side, uh, there were meetings and uh, there were three main topics. Uh, the first topic uh, concerning uh, the fear, the Egyptian fear of an Israeli incursion into Rafah, which is right at the Egyptian border. The Egyptian foreign minister said that would be a situation that would be a catastrophe and that would be extremely difficult uh, to control. Something I think um, uh, Ms. Baerbock is also agreeing with. The second topic is the also Egyptian frustration about the aid coming into the Gaza Strip. Also from the Egyptian side, everything has to be approved by the Israeli side, and that is very slow. There needs to be more aid coming in. Also something the Egyptian and the German side uh, basically uh, agreed on. And the third one is, of course, uh, the Egyptians briefed uh, uh, the foreign minister, German foreign minister on uh, the, where the negotiations are standing with the Egyptians and the Qataris uh, are uh, uh, mediators between Hamas and Israel. And uh, the last thing, the Egyptians made it again very clear uh, to Frau Baerbock that um, they want to have and there needs to be an unconditional ceasefire now. Uh, Karim, the UN Security Council votes on a ceasefire today. The US warns that that could hurt hostage negotiations. What's your take? Well, the U.S. put their own uh, resolution in uh, uh, lately, and it was uh, trying to link uh, the ceasefire with the hostage release. Uh, other states were saying that it's kind of a pick-and-choose situation, where, which would not end the war immediately. And this is why we have now uh, a second attempt today, uh, uh, brought in by other states, uh, asking for an immediate ceasefire for the rest of uh, the uh, months of Ramadan uh, and that should uh, enter into like a more sustainable longer ceasefire and there's no connection to the relief uh, release of hostages in this resolution. And the UN describes the situation in Gaza yet again as catastrophic. Dozens of aid trucks are waiting at the Egyptian border with little access, especially to the north. What are you hearing from the people there? Yeah, I mean, just yesterday, I got a message, uh, a voice message from the north, from a family that uh, is, uh, there's a lawyer, he's living in Gaza City with uh, his uh, three kids at the age between four and 11, his pregnant wife, he's taking care of his two elderly parents, and he is describing, it was 26 minutes, a voice message of total misery. He explained uh, the situation of food is catastrophic. They said at the beginning, they ate their stock, then they started to uh, do less meals. Then there was less food during the meals. And now there's really no food, he says. Uh, they're eating greenery, they find, which they cook and then put it uh, on the plates. They are looking through other destroyed houses by Palestinians who left the northern Gaza Strip in the hope that they find some food there. Uh, also, he said the, the, the water situation is also difficult. It takes, he walks every day for about five kilometers to get uh, some kind of water, which is actually not really drinkable because it's uh, kind of mixed with sewage water and it's very salty and he, he describes it as all kinds of living beings swimming in this water, so very difficult. And uh, the last situation he really explained was the psychological situation of his children. He said like uh, all his children are right now too scared to go to the toilet on their own and uh, he describes the psychological situation of his four-year-old, which uh, basically he says he's sitting all night on my lap and he makes all kinds of, he stops talking. He made all, makes all kinds of strange noises and uh, he's afraid that uh, his kids basically are losing their minds. So it's a very, very mm. miserable situation when it comes to food, when it comes to water, when it comes to the mental situation of the people who are right now in the Gaza, in the Northern Gaza Strip. And that is underlining, I think, the need uh, that is also discussed today in the UN Security Council about the immediate ceasefire for humanitarian reasons, especially in northern Gaza. Karim, thank you very much for bringing us up to date on the situation both in Gaza and from the talks there in Cairo.